हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज योर इंग्लिश लेसन टूडे वी विल रीड यूनिट नंबर सेवनटीन द वन मिलियन पाउंड बैंक नोट फ्रॉम ऑक्सफोर्ड रीडिंग सर्कल बुक सेवन सो वी स्टार्ट आर लेसन दिस इज पेज नंबर वन सिक्सटी फ्रॉम योर बुक वेन आई वॉज ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर्स ओल्ड आई वॉज अ माइनिंग ब्रोकर्स क्लर्क इन सैन फ्रांसिसको आई वॉज अ लोन इन द वर्ल्ड एंड हैड नथिंग टू डिपेंड अपॉन बट माई विट्स एंड अ क्लीन रेपोटेशन बट दीज वॉर सेटिंग माई फीट इन द रोड टू इवेंचुअल फॉर्चून एंड आई वॉज कॉन्टेंट my time was my own after the afternoon board saturdays and i was accustomed to spend a little time on a sailboat in the bay one day i ventured too far ventured a risky or daring journey and was carried out to sea just at nightfall when hope was about gone i was picked up by a small brig brig a person or a prison specially naval or military prison which was bound for london it was a long and stormy voyage and they made me work for my passage without pay as a common sailor when i stepped ashore in london my clothes were ragged and shabby shabby in poor condition and i had only a dollar in my pocket this money fed and sheltered me 24 hours during the next 24 i went without food and shelter about 10 o'clock on the following morning cd cd dirty looking and hungry i was dragging myself along portland place when a child that was passing Towed by a nursemaid, tossed a luscious big pear, luscious having a pleasant, uh, uh, pleasingly rich sweet taste, minus one bite into the gutter. I stopped, of course, and fastened my desiring eye on that muddy treasure. My mouth watered for it. My stomach. craved it my whole being begged for it but every time i made a move to get it some passing i deducted my purpose and of course i straightened up then and looked indifferent and pretended that i hadn't been thinking about the pair at all i was just getting desperate enough to brave all the shame and to seize it when a window behind me was raised and a gentleman spoke out of it saying stop in here please i was admitted by a servant and shown into a sumptuous sumptuous splendid room where a couple of elderly gentlemen were sitting they made me sit down they had just finished their breakfast and the sight of the remains of it almost overpowered me now something had been happening they are a little before which i did not know anything about until a good many days afterwards but i will tell you about it now those two old brothers had been having a pretty hot argument a couple of days before and had ended by agreeing to decide it by a bet which is the english way of settling everything you will remember that the bank of england once issued two notes of a million pounds each to be used for a special purpose connected with some public transaction with a foreign currency a foreign uh, current uh, country for some reason or other only one of these had been used and cancelled and other still lay in the wallets of the banks or bank the brothers happened to get to wondering what might be the fate of a perfectly honest and intelligent stranger who should be turned adrift in london without a friend and with no money but that million pound bank note and no way to account for his being in possession of it brother a said he would starve to death brother b said he wouldn't brother a said he couldn't offer it at bank or anywhere else because he would would be arrested on the spot so they went on disputing till brother b said he would be 20000 pounds that the man 
he would bet 20000 pounds that the man would live 30 days anyway on that million and keep out of jail too brother a to came up brother b went down to the bank and bought that note then he sent off a letter and the two brothers sat at the window a whole day watching for the right man to give a two they saw many honest faces go by that were not by that were not intelligent enough many that were intelligent enough but not honest enough many that were both by the possessors possessors were not poor enough or if poor enough were not strangers there was always a defect until i came along but they agreed that i filled the bill all around and there i was now waiting to know why i was called in they asked me questions and pretty soon they had my story finally they told me i would answer their purpose i said i was sincerely glad and asked what it was then one of them handed me an envelope i was going to open it but he said no take it to my lodgings and look it over carefully and not be hasty or rash i was puzzled and wanted to discuss the matter a little further but they didn't so i took my leave as soon as i was out of sight of that house i opened my envelope and saw that it contained money i lost not a moment but shoved note and money into my vest pocket and broke for the nearest cheap eating house we how i did eat when at last i couldn't hold any more i took out my money and unfolded it took one glimpse and nearly fainted five millions of dollars why it made my head swim i sat there stunned and blinking at the note the first thing noticed then was the landlord his eye was on the note and he was petrified petrified terrified he looked as if he couldn't stir hand or foot i did the only rational thing there was to do i reached the note towards him and said carelessly give me the change please he made a thousand thousand apologize for not being able to break the bill he wanted to look at it but he shrank from touching it I said, I am sorry for it is an inconvenience, but I must insist. Please change it. I haven't anything else. But he said that wasn't any matter. He was quite willing to let the trifle stand over still another time. Trifle, a thing of little value. I said I might not be in his neighborhood again for a good while, but he said he could wait and moreover I could have anything I wanted, anytime I chose and let the account run as long as I pleased. He said he hoped he wasn't afraid to trust as rich a gentleman as I was, merely because I chose to play locks on the public in the matter of dress. By this time another customer was entering and the landlord hinted to me to put the monster out of sight. Then he bowed me all the way to the door and I started straight for that house and those brothers to crack the mistake which had been made before the police should hunt me up and help me do it. I was pretty nervous and frightened, though of course I was no way in fault, but I knew man well enough to know that when they find they have given a tramp a million pound bill when they thought it was a one pounder they are in a frantic rage against him instead of quarreling with their own near sight sightedness all was quiet as a house which made me feel pretty sure the blunder was not discovered yet i rang I rang. The same servant appeared. I asked for those gentlemen. They are gone. Gone? Gone where? To the continent. I think for a month. A month? 
Oh, this is awful. I asked other questions but received no satisfactory answers. So I had to give it up and go away. What a riddle it all was. Maybe the latter would explain. I got the letter out and read and read it. This is what it said. You are an intelligent and honest man, as one may see by your face. We conceive you to be poor and a stranger. Enclosed you will find a sum of money. It is lent to you for thirty days without interest. Report at this house at the end of that time. I have a bet on you. If I win it, you shall have any situation that is in my gift. Any that is that you shall be able to prove yourself familiar with and competent to fill no signature no address no date well here was a call to be in you are posted on what had preceded all this but i was not it was just a deep dark puzzle to me i hadn't the least idea what the game was nor whether harm was meant me or a kindness i went into a park and sat down to try to think it out and to consider what i had best do at the end of an hour my reasonings had crystal crystallized into his verdict may be those men mean me well maybe they mean me ill no way to decide that let it go they have got a game or a scheme or an experiment of some kind on hand no way to determine what it is let it go there's a bat on me no way to find out what it is let it go that disposes of the indeterminable quantities indeterminable impossible to know the remainder of the matter may be classed and labeled with certainty if i ask the bank of england to place this bill to the credit of the man it belongs to they will do it for they know him although i don't but they will ask me how i came in possession of it and if i tell the truth they will put me in the asylum naturally asylum an inst institution for the care of people naturally and alive will land me in jail the same result would follow if i tried to bank the bill anywhere or to borrow money on it i have go to carry this immense burden immense extremely large around until those men come back it is useless to me and yet i must take care of it while i bag my living i couldn't give it away if i should try for neither honest citizen nor highway man would accept it those brothers are safe even if i lose their bill or burn it they are still safe because they can stop payment and the bank will make them whole but meantime i've got to do a month suffering without wages or profit unless i help win that bit bet whatever it may be and get that in situation that i am promised i should like to get that i go to thinking a good deal about that situation my hopes begin to rise high without doubt the salary would be large it would begin in a month after that i should be all right pretty soon i was feeling first rate by this time i was tramping the streets again the sa the sight of a tailor shop gave me a sharp longing to shed my rags and to clothe myself decently once more could i afford it no i had nothing in the world but a million pounds so i forced myself to go on by but soon i was drifting back again the temptation persecuted me cruelly at last i gave in i had to i asked if they had a misfit suit that had been thrown on their hands the fellow i spoke to nodded his head towards another fellow and gave me no answer i went to the indicated fellow and he indicated another fellow with his head and no words i went to him and he said tend to you presently i waited till he was done with what he was at then he took me into a back room and overhauled it a pile of rejected suits overhauled it overtake or overtaken and selected the rattiest one for me rattiest irritable i put it on 
it didn't fit but it was new and i was anxious to have it so i didn't find any fault but said it would be an accommodation to me if you would wait some days for the money i haven't any small change about me the fellow walked up a more sarcastic expression of continence sarcastic ironic continence facial expression and said oh you haven't well of course i didn't expect it i would only expect gentleman like you to carry large change i was nettled and said my friend you shouldn't judge a stranger always by the clothes he wears i am quite able to pay for this suit i simply didn't wish to put you to the trouble of changing a large note he modified his style a little at that and said though still with something of an air i didn't mean any particular harm but as long as rebukes are going i might say it wasn't quite your affair to jump to the conclusion that we couldn't change any note that you might happen to be carrying around on the contrary we can i handed the note to him and said oh very well i apologize he received it with a smile one of those large smiles which goes all around over and has folds in it and wrinkles and spirals and looks like the place where you have thrown a brick in a pond and then in the act of his taking a glimpse of the bill this smile froze solid and turned yellow and looked like those wavy warmy surprises of lava which you five find five uh, find hardened on little levels on the side of this west i never before saw a smile caught like that and perpetuated perpetuated to cause something to continue the man stood there holding the bill and looking like that and the proprietor hustled up and said briskly well what's up what's the trouble i said there isn't any trouble i am waiting for my change come come get him his change tot tor retorted it's easy to say sir but look at the bill the proprietor took a look gave a low eloquent whistle then made a dive for the pile of rejected clothing and began to snatch it this way and that talking all the time excitedly and as if to himself sell an eccentric millionaire such an unspeakable suit as that towards fool a bone fool drive every millionaire away from this place because he can't tell a millionaire from a tramp ah here's the thing i am up after please get those things off sir do me the favor to put on this shirt and this suit it's just the thing the very thing plain rich modest made to order for a foreign prince but that's all right we can't always have things the way we there trousers all right they fit you to a charm sir now the waistcoat ah right again now the coat lord perfect the whole thing i never saw such a triumph triumph in all my experience i expressed my satisfaction quite right sir quite right but wait till you see what we will get up for you on your own mayor come toward book and pan get at it length of leg 32 and so on before i could get in a word he had mayored me and was giving orders for dress suits morning suits shirts and all sorts of things when i got a chance i said but my dear sir i can't give these orders unless you can wait indefinitely or change the bill indefinitely it's a weak word sir eternally that's the word sir toad rush these things through and send them to the gentleman's address let them minor customers wait set down the gentleman's address and i'm changing my quarters i will drop in and leave the new address quite right sir quite right one moment let me show you out sir there good day sir good day well don't you see what was bound to happen i drifted naturally into buying whatever i wanted and asking for change within a week i was some twisly equipped with all needful comforts and luxuries and was housed in an expensive private hotel i took my dinners there but for breakfast i stuck by harris 
Harris Humble Feeding House, where I had got my first meal on my million pound bill. I was the making of Harris. The fact had gone all ab abroad that the foreign crank who carried million pound bills in his vest pocket was the patron saint of the place that was enough from being a poor struggling little enterprise it had become celebrated and overcrowded with customers harris was so grateful that he forced loans upon me and would not be denied and so proper as i was i had money to spend and was living like the rich and the great i judged that there was going to be a crash by and by but i was in now and must swim across or down i had become well known and it turned my head you could not take up a newspaper without finding in it one or more references to the west pocket million pounder and his latest doings at first in these mentions i was at the bottom of the personal gossip column next i was listed above the knights next above the barons and so on why i just swam in glory all day long that is the amount of it exercises a questions one what was the wager between the brothers answer the wager between the two brothers was to see what would happen to an honest man set adrift in london with nothing but a million pound bank note and no way to account for how he came to possess it one brother said that he would starve while the other disagreed with that two what kind of reception did the man get in the clothes shop answer as he was dressed in shabby clothes he got an indifferent reception at first but when the salesman saw the large note he was transfixed to the spot three how does the author describe the salesman's smile answer the author compares the salesman's smile which has wrinkles and spirals to the ripples which are made when a brick is dropped into a pond later when the salesman's smile froze the author compares it to way warmy spreads of lava on the edge of a volcano for how did people's behavior towards the man change after learning that he was rich answer the man the news that the man carried a million pound note in his pocket had gone around thus making him famous there were daily references in the newspaper about the eccentric millionaire which began at first at the bottom of the gossip columns but soon went on to become the front page news five in what way did the man's fame spread answer the man's fame spread as he tried to get change for the million pound note from different shops but could not get it anywhere six if you were given a one one million pound note what Uh, would you make the same decisions as the man did why or why not answer if i were given a 1 million pound note i would deposit it in a charity so that it could help someone in need the reference to context use alternative phrases from the box given on the next page in place of those in italics one i was just getting desperate enough to brave all the shame too but as i was not taken to sample i had to bear my trouble as best i could three the two brothers had an argument a couple of days before and had ended by agreeing to decide it by a bet four how would a stranger with no money of his own be able account for his being in possession of it five he said he hoped he wasn't afraid to trust on as rich a, as gentleman as i was six as i approached the house my excitement began to abate 
सेवन देर वॉज नो वे टू डिटर्मन वॉट गेम दे हैड इन माइंड सी वर्ड्स एंड मीनिंग वन एट द सेम थ्री लेटर्स टू ईच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टू मेक लॉन्गर वर्ड्स ट्रांसैक्ट ट्रांसैक्शन क्विस्ट क्वेश्चन डेपोजिट डिपोजिट डिपोजिशन पोजेस पोजेशन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्रेशन टू एट द सेम टू लेटर प्रीफिक्स टू ईच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टू मेक लॉन्गर वर्ड्स एक्सप्रेस एक्सपर्ट एक्सप्लेन एक्सपेंसिव एक्साइट थ्री एट द सेम थ्री लेटर सफिक्स टू ईच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टू मेक कंप्लीट वर्ड्स वट डू द वर्ड्स मीन गॉर्जियस लशियस समस यूनेमियस नर्वस एंशियस हिलेरियस three add the same three letter suffix to each of the following to make complete words what do the words mean gorgeous gorgeous means beautiful very attractive luscious luscious means having pleasingly rich sweet in taste sumptuous sumptuous means splendid unan unanimous Unanimous means of two or more people fully in agreement. Nervous means worried or slightly frightened. Anxious anxious means feeling or showing worry or concern. Hilarious hilarious means extremely amusing. D discuss and write. What do you think happened next? Does the man lose the money? Does he make more? what other adventures does he have you can make up your own ending alternatively you can read the full account to find out what mark twain had in mind answer he spends time in parties invites american ambassador to dinner party at his house he decides he decides to dumping up interest in the shares people listen to him and the shares do sell and in this way he earns his own dollars in a bank account at the end of the month thanks for listening for new videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and if you like my videos please share and like